How's it going everybody, it's Razine here and today is a very hot and glorious June the 12th. A Saturday with a new moon. Can you believe it? How often does that happen? A new moon on a Saturday. So as such, it would be rude not to set up. I've been using an extremely wide field of view combination which is the Zwo ASI 071MC Pro and the Sharpstar 61 EDPH2 and it is the widest field of view I've ever used with a telescope. It does undersample a little bit, the drizzling is kind of taking care of that, but either way, it is, it's amazing what you can fit in one frame with this combination. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. So recently I shared a photo of the Seder region, a very wide field shot of Seder, and that was shot with the Ellen hands. And I thought to myself, you know, I could add to that tonight, put the Ellen hands back in there and continue adding data to that project, maybe get about six hours. But I thought to myself, you know what I haven't done in some time? That is broadband one-shot color imaging. I could make a HARGB composite image of the SEDA region, so if that sounds interesting. So that's what I did. I used the IDUS NGS1 filter in the reducer flattener of the Sharp Star. So the telescope is all set up now, and I'm actually off to get some drinks with my partner for a bit until it gets dark, and then I'll, I'll nip out. And, get imaging and actually start going because it doesn't actually get dark enough to photograph until about half past 10 now because we're like I said we're getting to in summer there's no astronomical darkness but I'm going to take what I get so um off to the pub Right, so it's actually getting dark enough to start imaging now. Um, my method of doing vlogs is going to be slightly different because there's a new garden. It's the big garage at the end of the garden means it's incredibly reflective and echoey in my garden. And the village I live in now is extremely quiet. You can hear so much. So out of a courtesy of not being so loud, I'm probably not going to do much talking outside anymore more voiceover b-roll kind of thing so let me know what you think of this new format i hope it still delivers the experience and the story that i'm trying to convey so fingers crossed on that one after setting up the telescope and the polar alignment what kind of exposures am i going to be using normally for broadband i would be using about two or three minute long exposures so i tried two minutes when i was uh plate solving and framing and focusing and it was okay but i just chucked it up to three minutes so what I'm doing is as many three minute long exposures as I can. Judging by the clear sky chart, it starts getting bright again about half past 3 a.m. So that means I could probably get about four, three to four hours of broadband data. And that's what I'm gonna try and go for. I set it to do the auto meridian flip. And at the end of the plan, it's gonna park itself to the home position. And then I can go out in the morning, shoot my flat frames, didn't mess up that time shoot my flat frames dark flats and uh, I think I need some darks for this camera as well so I can just bring all the equipment in to the garage and then uh, sort the calibration out from there but yeah I'm actually really looking forward to how this project comes out I've never done something this wide with a deep sky astrophotography imaging rig yeah I've used the Star Trek and DSLR before but I've not done something this wide with a telescope and the Sharp Star has been such a performer. It's going back soon to First Light Optics. The review is bin. If you saw the review, I hope you enjoyed it. The time between imaging sessions in the UK is too long. <sighs> but it's always fun when you do get to actually go out an image. Uh, I saw Luca Matico, he uses, I think he uses an L Extreme, but he was using 10 minute long frame um, shots with his 2600. And I thought to myself, 
I'm going to start trying 10 minute long images as well. And the narrowband data is 10 minute long sub exposures blended into three minute long broadband sub exposures. It's all going to be stacked in Deep Sky Stacker and edited in Photoshop. So I hope you enjoy the image at the end. And again, let me know what you think of this new format, trying to do something different, trying to work around the limitations of the new garden in terms of audio. So let me know how it goes. Drop me a comment down below. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy the image. And as always, thanks very much for joining me for a night of astrophotography. It means a lot to have you here with me. Hope you all have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.